It's experiment number eight, the preparation of triphenylmethanol. We're gonna do a, we're gonna make a Grignard reagent, and we're gonna react it with benzophenone and make triphenylmethanol. It's all very straightforward. We have oven dry glassware. The glassware must be dry. Water is your, water is not your friend. So if you've got a grad cylinder that's got water in it, you're gonna be in trouble. So. We need our magnesium turnings, 200 milligrams. Pop that in there. An oven dry, dry grad cylinder. Some diethyl ether, 10 milliliters. Put that over there. And we need a speck of iodine. Iodine is gonna clean the surface of the magnesium. And it, I mean it's a speck, it's small. If you can see it, it might be too much sort of the amount of flywood poop, a little bit. And that will give the ether a little color. There we go. Now, what do we have to do? We've got that stirring, we've got the diethyl ether, the iodine's gonna clean the surface of the magnesium a little bit, help activate it so it'll react. And then we have our bromobenzene. So using the Eppendorf, We add one milliliter. You will dispense your reagents in the fuel hook, please. And then quickly, our cooling column, and we have a rubber bung for the top. We need to keep the solvent vapors under control, but you must never run a closed system. So we have a nitrogen-filled balloon with a needle. Please do not stab yourself with the needle. Take the guard off, insert the needle in the middle of the rubber bung, open the valve, and there we have our reaction set up. A little bit of cooling water, and we just stir that and watch. Initiating the reaction between the bromobenzene and the magnesium turnings can be a real pain. Sometimes there's this induction period and you never know how long it's going to take. So what I've done here is I've taken a hot tap water bath and put it on my system and I'm just going to keep boiling this ether and uh, reaction vessel, keep it boiling and hope that the reaction goes. Thank God we're doing this on a small scale. The reaction be, can be extremely exothermic, and if you do it on a big scale, when it initiates, you better be ready to cool it, otherwise you'll get rocket fuel. Okay, it took a little while, but the reaction initiated, and the iodine color quickly dissipated, and then it went colorless, and now I'm starting to get a, an exothermic reaction so it's bubbling you can see the bubbles coming off of the magnesium and this is a good sign now it's reacting away on its own and we just have to wait for it to finish boy look at that sucker go when everything's dry the ether is dry the magnesium turnings have been oven dried the flask and glassware is all dry when she goes she goes good can you imagine doing this on a big scale without sufficient cooling? That's how accidents happen. Right, we have dissolved our 1.5 grams of benzophenone in 10 mils of diethyl ether in a vial. We want to keep it capped, right? Ether, fumes, get a little sleepy. Okay, so I've got a Pasteur pipette, I've got my solution. Now, close the valve on your nitrogen balloon carefully take the rubber stopper and the thing out. Don't stab yourself with the needle. We're going to add this in about four shots. So we'll just fill up the pasture pipette, add number one, and close, and put the rubber bung back and open up the nitrogen again. So we're going to let that react, we're going to let that calm down, and doesn't seem to be too violent, but we'll give it a minute. And after another two minutes, I'll add another portion. 
Okay, here we are, 10 minutes later, and the addition is all complete. The reaction is starting to subside a bit. You will note that there's some unreacted magnesium metal in there. We're not concerned about a little bit of extra magnesium metal. The acid workup will take care of that. Now, once again, we have to stir and wait. Okay, that didn't take very long. It only took about five minutes, but you'll note we have a precipitate and it's getting quite thick. So we just keep stirring, let the little molecules do their jobs, and in another 10 minutes we'll be able to start the quenching procedure. Nice reaction. Looking good. Okay, this is really, really good. The, the, it completely solidified. There's so much solid produced that the solution looks like, it looks like uh, a white solid. Now, we need to quench. So, first things first, let's take our needle out and very carefully cap the needle so nobody gets stabbed, right? And we can put this back at the front of the room where it's supposed to go. Now. We're gonna add, take the rubber bung off and leave it off. We will get our Canada arm here. Now, water first, and this is cold. So carefully add a little bit of water. Not much happening. Wouldn't really expect too much to happen. There we go. Added the water. I still have my cooling, and I still have my cooling bath here. And it's completely solid. So we're just going to have to let that work its way through for a moment and uh, be patient. Okay, I had to wait a couple of minutes and then I actually had to get in here with my spatula and break up the lumps a little bit just to make sure I've got a relatively good mix there. Now it's time to quench with the acid. According to my calculations, we need five and a half milliliters of three molar hydrochloric acid. You can do the math too. So I've got a little extra and I'm just going to add it in uh, pipettfuls, one pipetful at a time. Add it in, stand back, let it, do, let it do its job for a minute, keep the cooling on, and then we'll continue. Still quenching. Need to be patient, and then when all the solids dissolve, then the acid will start to eat up the leftover magnesium, and we want that to be dissolved too. Now, we've finished adding the acid slowly with cooling on the system, so that's all nice and well and good. You can still see that the aqueous layer on the bottom is still a bit cloudy, and the magnesium turnings that are left over are still fizzing away and there's bubbles. So we got to be patient and wait for the magnesium to be consumed. Finally, finally, the aqueous layer has gone clear. So now we have our, our product is in the ether layer and we have the aqueous layer on the bottom. Now in the lab manual, it says we have to do a TLC, thin layer chromatography. This is where we need to spot the ether solution. This is going to be the crude for our TLC plate. Purification, it says separate in the lab manual. Separate means use a sub funnel. Put that in there, drain off the aqueous layer, do the washes as instructed. Then we're going to use the rotovap, roto suck off the ether, add some hexane, swirl that around, and we, should, we will get a solid. Interestingly, the byproducts are soluble in hexane, the product is not. So, quick vacuum filtration, little wash with some hexane, we've got our product, spot the TLC plate, run the TLC plate, and you're done. Have fun, we'll see you in the lab.